Uh, yes, I'll just be uh, be quite brief. I think my my colleague, Senator, uh, and first of all, uh, Minister, I'd like to very much warmly welcome you to the House, and uh, I, I'm hoping that we can have you here again because I think these are areas of huge interest to all of us. Um, I, I want to. I'll talk to a couple of the schemes in a moment, but I first want to pick up on some of what was said. I think by by my own colleague, Senator Ruan, and, and Senator Conway Walsh, and I think it's important, and it is not. I necessarily minister an indictment of you or a reflection on you, but it is an important thing to acknowledge um, the impact that austerity and the austerity measures had on the community development sector. Uh, I myself was working in uh, the community and voluntary sector. I was part of the attempts to organise against cuts in the early period of austerity in 2008-2009. We had marches and we had a little logo and we tried to begin because one of the things of course is that many of these projects were quite scattered quite maybe small numbers of staff part-time staff it wasn't the same as some of the larger sectors that were able to mount a resistance and it really is the case that there was some significant decimation at the time when community development and community spirit and cohesion was most needed. And it went alongside again, unfortunately, and I say this only so that we can think constructively of where we go now, but at times when things like the Combat Poverty Agency that really looked at how you interrogate, not just identifying poverty, but how you challenge it, how you combat it, and the, the National Consultative Committee on Racism and Interculturalism, how you build those, how you keep integration uh, within communities, those pieces of work all of that work of, you know, those, those were kind of national bodies, but it's maybe in that same set of measures there was the cutback and the pullback in community development. You did have those who were outspoken and raising the useful red flags about the problems on the ground of austerity. You know, red flags which should be welcomed. And we see it, and this isn't true just in Ireland, I would say, but across Europe. We know now that the European Union has acknowledged that they need to bring in a social pillar to repair the huge damage done in terms of society and in terms of social cohesion in Europe. And it's measurable in the Eurobarometer, it's measurable in the figures, the lack, the loss and the, the, the atrophication of social cohesion during the period of austerity. So I think it was regrettable that some of those who were most outspoken, who were most perhaps generous and risk-taking in, in highlighting the issues, were sometimes some of the first community development projects to either be absorbed into others or to be shut down. I think the Community Workers Co-op in Galway was one of the first ones to take a strong hit uh, for a, a challenging voice. But then within those community development projects that remained, there's also another pr problem which was and this is something, Minister, I'm, I'm saying I think that there is potential to be addressed. We had, I'm perhaps paraphrasing, what, what I call the 40-40-10-10 rule, whereby for many community development projects we're involved in what I think is really nobly put, and I, lo I love that you've made it the mission in terms of how the department is described, uh, you know, to support vibrant, inclusive and sustainable communities throughout Ireland. That wider work of building and engaging the community had to move through a grid, 40-40-10-10, where 40% of all the time and resources had to go to training, 40% had to go to employment, and you've only a 10 and a 10% left for actual community development. What it meant was youth groups, not necessarily parents, but youth groups, to, to make young people engage and know themselves as citizens, even at a time when there wasn't work. That the work with younger people, with children, that the work with those who were maybe carers or had disabilities. And, and the area where I encountered it myself was when I was working with older people. And some of those brilliant initiatives that have been happening around the empowerment and engagement of older people got atrophied. So that, that shrinkage for the work of building the fabric of society, which community development was. And, and, and I, I, I like, again, it's another line, and I recognise these aspirations, Minister Department, when you talk to communities having better chances of making choices for themselves and playing a key role in designing and delivering appropriate solutions. This is the key thing. One of the great principles of community development is that you empower the community to themselves recognise what they need, to say, this is what matters to us, this is what will work for us, this is what we need. And there is an unfortunate problem sometimes that in, uh, again, the patchwork of schemes, each of them trying to do good work that has come in since, 
They're very much focused around specific pieces of work, specific targets, specific parameters. And that space and flexibility that the community development sector had to empower people to set the agenda, to maybe identify ideas and occurrences, which you know, might start in one town, but may again be, become a national change. Because the ideas for the future of Ireland are coming from our communities as well. They're not simply something that lands on a top-down basis. And we need to recognise the ideas, the ingenuity, not just economic ideas, but social transformative ideas that come through. So I, I say this, Minister, to you because I can see that you're passionate about this brief and that you recognise our communities, both rural and urban, and that that is something that that sense of, uh, and I would say just two or three issues I want to highlight in particular. Um, there's a number of different initiatives. I, I welcome, for example, the outdoor recreation infrastructure scheme. The public spaces and the shared spaces are something. And I know that there's strands of funding through LEADER, there's something that comes through sports, there's the recreators. But idea, that idea of the public and shared space, within our urban communities in particular, there is a challenge now. We want much more housing. We need housing that is better. We need to be identifying spaces that, for example, are maybe being, you know, I give to example the Dample of Dublin 8. We know that player wills. Many people would like to see that turned into social housing. But yet Weaver Park is shutting down. And to recognise that those green spaces and shared spaces are, in fact, part of the fabric of what makes, you know, an, 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 a, 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 a community a community. And it is important that there's resourcing of public spaces and shared public spaces in our urban communities as well as in our rural communities. That's something really vital. And if we don't have that, I mean, I, I've spoken about it previously in terms of the pollinator plan. You know, there is an, almost an ecology and an ecosystem within each place. And it's the social as well as an environmental uh, environment that needs to be nurtured. Um, uh, Other schemes I've, sp I've spoken to, um, I want to just commend um, uh, my, my uh, uh, colleague around the work that has happened in Balahadrim, because I think it is more Hopkins, Senator Hopkins, I know she is encouraged in support of that, to build that excitement and support about communities that are growing and expanding and that have new arrivals coming into that. I think, Minister, that's something where you can play a really vital role, but it is important that resources come with that. That, for example, the community who take in and have new members and maybe a new vibrancy coming back into their main streets also have extended bus services, also have extended health resources. And I think that sense of ensuring that we don't just build houses and apartments, for example, on the outskirts of Dublin, but that we plan the resources, the schools, the parks for the children and the people who will grow up there. And similarly, in our rural communities and other communities, that when we're bringing in people, we also bring in resources to, to strengthen and a vibrant life. Um, others have spoken to certain aspects that are very concerned. I have a huge concern in terms of volunteers and things. The, the, the citizen information services in our towns and communities, I think it is one of the most regrettable decisions has been the decision to move away from the autonomy of local citizen information services right across Ireland. And I think it's a decision which will haunt the government. I, I sat on the Social Protection Committee. We were deeply unhappy with, 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 with how we heard that process had been rolled out. And I think that's something, Minister, you might want to examine from the perspective of your brief. Um, two last, last, last short points, and I know I'm coming to the end of my time. Um, the area of the arts. Minister, I believe it's something that you, we, when we look to the role of arts centres around the country, and we know that there are tensions and difficulties whereby one place may have an arts centre, another place has a sports centre, one place may have a community centre. There can sometimes be, I think, a false sense if you've got one that you're not going to get the others, when in fact they're doing different but very complementary work. And I think um, I would ask you to look, Minister, to the, 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 National, the Arts Council recently did an audience survey that looked at the importance of the arts, not just for artists, but for the audiences, what it means for them to have access to the arts at local level and community level. And um, so thank you very much, Minister. I'm going to leave that at that point. I want to just give a last very short point to commend the Digital Innovation Scheme. Um, I, I, in terms of the, the bridge, I know that many have very tragically lost their lives in Galway, and I think that's something very positive. And I would also, at a separate point, Minister, perhaps in con uh, con with others, if we could discuss <coughs> the manner of procurement within SICAP and other funding, that we don't have a situation whereby the ways that funding comes out, in fact, prohibits the security and, and the, and, and the uh, enthusiasm of long-term planning um, within the sector. Thank you.